Hey guys, welcome to my in-depth Fiora guide. My name is Soda and I'm a high ELO Fiora player. And in this video, we're gonna cover everything that you need to know in order to crush your lane matchups, carry games, and climb as fast as possible with Fiora. I know most of you probably won't watch the whole video, which is totally fine. So I will put timestamps below so that if you wanna skip to the part of the video that you're looking for, you can go ahead and do that. However, there will be invaluable information shared at all parts of the video. So if you're serious about mastering this champion, then make sure you watch all the way through, take notes, and maybe hop in the practice tool in the background. We're going to cover matchups, abilities, combos, runes, item build paths, and how to play the early, mid, and late game with Fiora. But before we get into that, we are in the process of updating the Ticket to Diamond blueprint for the next season. We are mainly focusing on updates for the top lane. The top lane is by far the best lane to climb with in solo queue. So if you're serious about climbing and you want to take your game to the next level and get to the rank you deserve, then make sure you check out the course in the description below. You're also going to get access to our private discord to interact with other players who are on the same journey as you. Use code Fiora to get $50 off. All right, let's get into it. First, we're going to talk about Fiora's matchups. For the most part, Fiora is a bully in the top lane. So many players hate playing against her because of her high damage, great healing, and insane mobility. Due to item changes and along with some meta shifts with tanks, Fiora is still a dominant force against most tanks in this game, and she's not really going to have a hard time playing against them. You should feel very confident anytime you lock in Fiora against a tank. The only tank I personally have a hard time with is Maokai because I'm bad, but he isn't in a great spot right now, so not much to worry about there. Fiora is also great into popular duelists and bruisers like Aatrox, Riven, and Camille. Any fighter who has obvious CC that you can repost and use as a stun is easy to play against but we will talk about that more in depth during the laning part of this guide. There are three categories of champions that Fiora struggles to play against, and they really limit her impact in games. The first category are ranged champions. Fiora has a real problem against Jace, Kennen, Akshan, and Quinn. Fiora is great at sticking to her opponent once she is on top of them, but all of these ranged champions have great ways of poking her out, and also kiting away when Fiora tries to get that engage in. Champs like Kennen and Jace also have CC that is very hard to repost, so it nullifies one of your three main abilities. When they all in you after slowly poking you down, you sort of need to get lucky in order to repost their stun. If you are successful, there are situations and times when you can turn around and kill them with the healing from your ult, but these matchups are just very difficult for Fiora. If for some reason you happen to get a lead against one of these champions, it doesn't get better in the late game because these champions can stay far away under tower and just clear waves. It's very difficult for you to take towers in the side lane against these ranged champions, even when you have a lead. The second category of champions she struggles to play against are high CC bruisers like Poppy and Pantheon. They have abilities that are hard to repost. Pantheon's burst is no joke and Poppy's anti-dash zone make it a nightmare for ganks. Thankfully, they aren't really popular champions right now and haven't been for a long time, so you might face them in two out of a hundred games, but your wave management needs to be on point when you play into these champions. And the last category is just one champion. It's probably the most popular matchup you're going to play, and that's against Darius. If you lose the first two levels and your wave management isn't good, then good luck getting ahead in this lane. Darius is strong at level one, level two, level three, and he's even stronger than you at level six. And his slow plus his ghost is brutal if you happen to be caught overextended. Usually the only way to win this matchup is to get some jungle help to get a lane advantage. Then you can bait the Darius in and lunge close to him when he uses his Q to avoid the damage and the healing. If you can win that fight or chunk him out, then you can really get a lead going. But in most games, this is going to be the hardest matchup that you have. In this next section, we're going to talk about bans. But if you don't like playing against Darius, then Darius is a good ban as Fiora. Okay. Okay, when it comes to bans on Fiora, it's totally preferential, whatever you want to do. Like I just said, Darius is a great ban, but if you also hate playing against Pantheon, Akshan, or just some other random champion, then feel free to ban whatever champion you have a hard time playing against. I think another thing that is important if you're planning on playing Fiora is to also try and help your other lanes. So if that means banning an OP mid laner or an OP support or jungler, that can really pay dividends later on in the game so that your other laners don't have to play against an OP Hecarim or an OP Grave or something like that. This might change based on the patch or the month, so make sure you keep up on this and just figure out who the best bands are in a certain patch. Okay, let's talk about Fiora's runes. These used to be very straightforward, but now there are some major variations that players need to think about before hopping into a game. If you were to log on to op.gg right now, you would see that the most popular rune is Grasp of the Undying. This sounds like a good rune because you get that healing and poke and lane, along with some other great runes in the resolve tree, but if you were to look at the highest elo Fiora players, you would see that they still run Conquer 90% of the time on Fiora. 
There are games where Grasp could work, but Fjord is already so strong in lane that the scaling of Conqueror is usually the rune that you'll want to run. Your main secondary tree is Resolve, so you'll want to take Demolish in the top left, and then for your second rune, you have three options. For melee champions or any champion with high burst, you can take Bone Plating. If you're in a poke matchup, take Second Wind. It helps you regen faster after taking damage, and if you're in a farm lane, take Overgrowth. This will give you more max HP and help you scale a little better into the late game. Okay, for your summoner spells, you'll obviously want to take Flash on F. I don't know what you guys are doing putting Flash on D. Let me know in the comments which key you put Flash on. Anyways, for your second summoner spell, it's actually a 50-50 situation. In the past, you would always take Teleport, but now with the minor nerfs of Teleport over the last couple of years, many high elo players are starting to take Ignite in lane. This gives you way more kill pressure and even gives you the chance to solo dive more effectively if you get the chance. If you don't feel confident with your wave control or just in general during the laning phase then take teleport because it will allow you to get back to lane quicker if you die but if you are very confident then consider experimenting with ignite i will quickly mention too when it comes to getting back to lane that you should always be queuing or lunging back to lane it's a low cost ability you'll make it to lane faster and miss fewer minions which means you'll be less behind in xp all right hey guys now we're going to talk about fiora's abilities so if we look at her passive her passive is duelist dance fiora identifies vitals on enemy champions hitting this vital with an attack or ability deals an additional 15.8% max health true damage, grants Fior 50% movement speed, decaying over two seconds, and restores 100 health. So basically, your playstyle as Fiora lives and breathes around this vital. So as you can see, they pop up around an enemy champion, and then over a certain amount of time, you can see in the top left corner, very, very small, it will start to decay and go to another one. A very simple trick for lane, like let's say you go to lane at level one right here, and you don't like that the, the vital is on the opposite opposite side of the champion. What you can do is walk away from the enemy champion, go back, and then it will reset the vital. And usually it'll make or put it in a much closer position so that you can get a proc off at level one and help you get an early lead. Fiora's Q is this lunge. It's a short lunge, and it can also go over uh, short periods of terrain. Like if we go over here in the top lane, she can jump over the wall. She can jump over this wall. She can jump over this wall, she can't do any of the thick walls, but all the small ones that other dashes can get over will allow her to hop over that wall as well. This is your main mobility item. It's also your main da damage item, and you're going to want to use this ability to reposition around enemy champions to get that proc off for the most damage possible. Fiora's W is her repost. So Fiora's W parries all incoming damage, disables, and negative effects for 0.75 seconds, and then it stabs. The stab deals magic damage to the first champion hit and slows both movement speed and attack speed for 50 seconds. If your parry is an immobilizing effect, the stab is turned into a stun instead of a slow. So if your can turn CC abilities from her opponents into CC abilities back. Now, a lot of players try to time Fiora's W uh, in fights, and they keep it very for a very long time, and then they use it in a one-on-one. -on -one. Now, if you're against a champion that has a very easy knock-up or stun to parry, then yes, obviously use it to stun your opponent and deal damage, but it's also important because it deals damage and it's slow. So if you're trying to finish off a, a, an enemy champion or you're trying to uh, chase them, you can just use it to slow them down, catch up to them, and then use a Q to deal damage. It's also important to note that this ability will proc Fiora's uh, vitals. So if you see here, it procs the vitals and does extra damage. As you can see here, you can also cast it in the midst of your Q. So if you Q up here and then W down, you see that it can, it'll come out after, and then it'll also, it'll allow your, your uh, lunge to do damage and then do damage just afterwards. It's also important to note that if you were to get stunned and then you were posted to the complete opposite direction of where they were, you would negate the damage and the CC, but you wouldn't be able to return it as a stun or to deal the damage. So, so in a weird way, this is a skill shot. So it is an ability that might take a little bit of getting used to. All right, Fiora's E is blade work. Fiora gains 90% attack speed for her next two attacks. The first attack slows by 30% for one second. The second attack always critically strikes for 200% damage. This is a great ability. It allows you to dish out a lot of damage once you're on top of your opponent. And it acts, most importantly, as an auto attack reset with the slow and with that attack speed, you can get a lot of damage off quickly. So if we just proc'd E and then used it, you can see that she attacks really, really fast. But what if we animation canceled it to do even more damage? So we auto attack E right after, and then you can see that her E procs the second time as well. If you want to get a little bit more fancy with this, you can auto E, and then what you can do is you can Q and then add the auto immediately after for the most amount of damage. So...
It allows you to get four hits in very quickly along with Procky and the Vital. Okay, Fiora's ultimate is Grand Challenge. So the passive is Duelist Dance move speed bonus is increased to 50 percent so before you get to r it won't give you that movement speed but after you level it up it will give you an increased amount of movement speed over the game now the active is fiora reveals all four vitals on a champion for a max of 63.4 percent max health true damage and gains duelist stance move speed bonus it's also impor important to note here that here in the practice tool i have automatically upgraded to level 18 so a lot of these values are higher than they would be at say level one level three or level six so if Fiora strikes all four vitals within eight seconds or if the target dies then Fiora restores 296 health per second to surrounding allied champions for between two to five seconds, scaling with the number of vitals hit. So this is what it looks like when you proc her R. It puts all these vitals around your champion. And if you happen to hit them all, you get this healing zone for you and your team. Now, if you were to proc her ultimate, and let's say you only got two down, but then one of your teammates ended up killing this champion, then your team would still get this healing zone around. So a quick tip for when you're in lane, if you have an easy vital that you can hit when you're all inning, you should hit it, then proc her ultimate, which will allow you to get another one in the same spot so that you can get even more true damage down onto your opponent. I think it's also important to mention here too that Gore Drinker will proc your passive. Even if you're kind of far away, like if we go all the way down here, It'll still proc her passive. Okay, one more thing that I did want to talk about when it comes to Fiora's Lunge is that with other abilities in the game, you can't Q flash. So in the middle of your Q animation, you are unable to flash. Like I'm hitting my flash button and I can't in the middle of this animation. Now what you can do is flash and then Q. It allows you to cover a little bit more ground, hit these vitals. It's not as clean as a Q flash, but it's still something. I also want to mention too that you don't have to go the whole range of your Q here, like all the way over here. You can Q very close to your character model to get a very fast proc. So if we went the entire distance on the Q to hit this vital on the left, let's see here, it takes a little bit of time. Now, if we're right on top of the vital, we can tap to the side of Fiora and get a very quick Q. So if you're not trying to close distance, it allows you to get damage off very, very quickly instead of doing the full lunge with the Q. All right, hey guys, now we're going to talk about the build paths and itemization on Fiora. To start out, you're going to want to go Doran's Blade or Doran's Shield, depending on the matchup that you're in. If you're in a melee matchup and you're going to be fighting a lot and need that lifesteal, then go ahead and take Doran's Blade. You're going to take this in 90% of games usually. You'll want to take Doran's Thorn Shield in situations when you're against a high poke champion, like a range champion, Akshan, Teemo, Cassiopeia, something like that, kind of niche picks in the top lane. But when you pick Doran Shield along with Second Wind, the rune in the resolve tree, it's going to allow you to stay super healthy in the top lane during the laning phase, and it will pay major dividends later on in the game when you're a lot healthier and you have higher XP. Okay, after that, you're going to want to uh, pick Hydra and build Hydra. This is This item has gotten nerfed a couple of times in the preseason because it was so OP. But the wave clear and the way that Fiora uses this item, it's just a must build on her. So uh, depending on how much gold you back with for your first back, you can either go for a pickaxe or the full team at, or you can get a couple of uh, long swords and then go into Warhammer first and then build your team at. It just helps with a little bit of cooldown reduction. So you're going to want to go Hydra first. Now, a lot of players will go Divine Sunderer. It's an okay build on Fiora. It's great if you're running Grasp of the Undying. You generally want to do this into ranged champions, I think think I, i'm actually not super sure when sunderer would be better than going hydra into gore drinker but if you prefer the sheen proc and you like it for poke then by all means keep building divine sunderer but the high elo fior mains are going hydra into gore drinker the active of iron spike whip is just so good that it's just a must build on Fiora. So same thing here. If you need the sustain, you can go the Kindle gem, um, but it, whenever you can go pickaxe into iron spike first, and then go ahead and round out the entire item. Now, somewhere in there, depending on whether you're playing against an AP champion or an AD champion, you can buy Merc treads or steel caps. Again, if you're against a lot of CC Merc treads would be better over steel caps, or if you're playing into a lot of AD, then you can go plated steel caps. Just one of these two will be your best bet. Now, after these two core items, you can really do a lot lot with your build. I will say the most common builds I am seeing personally for my friends that are high elo of your mains, even myself in my own games of what is working the best, Death Stance tends to be the best number three item on Fiora. The AD, the healing, the armor, it's just so, so good. 
So unless you are against a high AP team, then I would go Death Dance third. But again, if you're against a lot of AP, then definitely go Hex Shrinker into Mob Melmordius. The shield on this item is insane. If you're able to get on top of even a Fed AP champion, you'll be able to 1v1 them as Fiora if you have this item. So do not sleep on Ma and uh, Hex Shrinker. These are insane items. So let's say you went, you're against a lot of AD. You're going with these three items, Hydra, Gore, and then into Death's Dance. What I've seen a lot recently is people are still really liking Hole Breaker. And the reason why people are liking Hole Breaker is because it is a very cheap item. And then when you're at three items, in order to get the spike of a fourth item, you want it to be relatively cheap. I mean, you could go Spear of Sojin or Bork or something, but those items are very, very expensive. When you're split pushing a lot as Fiora, the base stats that you get with Hole Breaker along with the boarding party passive is just super, super convenient as a split pusher. I've seen a lot of high elo Fiora mains in Korea, EUS and NA continue to build Hole Breaker as their fourth item after this it really is super dependent on how the game is going usually ga's passive is so good that it's worth just buying um, but again if there's high burst mages on the other team then taking ma with hex drinker can be very very beneficial as well but honestly if you're playing this late into the game you're not doing well enough at closing out games and you probably should never get to this point where you are full full build without winning um, but just in case here's a sample build against ad but if you're against ap you could trade it out for mercs add in a hex drinker in there and you're gonna be in a very very good spot itemization wise okay now we're gonna talk about some combos in the top lane with fiora the first one is just using your Q to proc a vital. I mean, this is just Fiora 101 using it. One thing that is really good to know with your Q is that you don't have to go the full length like this. You can see it's a little slow to finally get that proc off. But what you can do is you can basically Q on your character of Fiora and she will do an instant Q and get that damage off. It allows you to get these procs off very quickly. allows you to get the damage very quickly instead of doing the full long lunge i mean it's it's not crazy but in a close fight being able to do a really fast q will make a big difference so you can do a short lunge okay the second combo is doing a lunge into an auto attack and then running away lunge into an auto attack and then running away after that you can do a q into a w as you can see both proc you can use your w while you're in your q animation you can save it for the end while you're looking at aiming at your opponent both pieces of damage will hit you get a slow in. You can also fit an auto attack in there as well. As you can see, I'll QW and auto attack here. I missed my W. And you get three pieces of damage there. It's also important to mention that with your Q, you're not able to Q flash. Like when I'm in my Q animation, I'm trying to flash. But as you can see in the bottom right corner, it's graying out. So you cannot flash in your Q. But if you were trying to get to a vital in a far off situation, you could flash into a Q. It takes a little bit longer, but it could definitely work if you need to get to that vital. It's a little bit slower. I wish Fjord could Q flash, but unfortunately she's unable to, so you can do a flash Q. Another little tidbit of advice when it comes to Fjord's ultimate is hitting her vital and then procking her ult so you can get the vital in that situation or in that same spot immediately as well. Another quick and easy combo is using your auto attack Q and Gore Drinker or queuing into your auto attack and then Gore Drinker and then running away. You get a lot of easy damage like this. Honestly, after those basic combos, there's not a ton that you need to know with your when it comes to your combos. You're just going to have to learn how you can most effectively get down as much damage as possible and use your Gore Drinker to proc vitals, use your auto attacks, the auto cancel with your E, your lunge, being able to use your lunge in short distances to get the damage off quickly, and then being able to use your W as damage, but also to use it as a stun or a slow in close fights. I think another thing I think is interesting that I'll, I can probably just go ahead and throw in this part of the video. Let's say you're in a team fight. It, for whatever reason, happens to be in the top lane. Let's say this dummy right here in the middle, the one I'm hitting right now, is a tank diving your team's backline. And back here, you have your AD carry. AD carry. Now with Fiora, it's really difficult here to get to the back line, maybe do some damage. If you're super fed, it'll be okay. But the odds of you being able to get back there 
just by running through the whole team and assassinating the AD carry is very, very low. Now, what you can do instead is because your ultimate will apply a heal to your entire team, you can just drop it on a tank or whoever is diving the back line, help proc it or just help peel your carries while you kill that champion with the, um, the ultimate on it so that your team can get a heal as you start to go and fight the rest of the team. So using your ultimate, not to assassinate an AD carry, but using it to kill like a tank or a bruiser that's diving the back line can usually pay very, very large dividends in team fights. I will also mention too, when playing Fiora, you don't always want to just kind of go through the entire team as the, the frontliner. It's usually not going to work. Setting up wards for a teleport flank uh, is key, or just kind of looking for a flank in the middle of the fight is useful as well. So just keep that in mind. You're going to want to use Fiora as a split pusher, as a flanker, or as someone that is able to peel the carries in the team fight. All right, guys, now it's time for us to look more in depth at playing the early game on Fiora. I will be pausing a decent amount here in the first 10 minutes because I do want to highlight a lot of small and key things that uh, this player is doing. Uh, this player is a diamond two player that I thought had a very, very good game that we could analyze uh, for this guide. And so I believe Fiora actually got a very, very early kill. Um, super early in the game is already one and zero. I want to know from um, in invade but it doesn't really mess up how you should play the laning phase because he made it before minion spawned and he hasn't spent that gold yet. So we're just going to kind of watch it and we're going to kind of take a look at this matchup. Uh, playing against Aatrox, who's one of the most popular champs in the game right now, is very, very common. And I do also want to talk about this uh, Ignite versus Ignite um, play that is happening in the top lane here because like we talked about earlier with uh, summoner spells more and more players are running ignite in the top lane instead of teleport and so it's important to understand the dynamics of how that changes the lane so we'll go ahead and get it started just want to notice this is super minor uh, but he uh, auto attacked a minion one time one of my favorite things to do if i have lane control right when minions spawn at about 130 135 is to hit two minions if my opponent is not there yet uh, if you hit any more than that the melee is in front uh, it could start a a fast push when what you're trying to do is build a slow push so that you can have um, a minion advantage and also build up for a cheater recall um, at the third wave. But we'll see how he plays it. He's probably going to look for a proc. So here with Aatrox, with the, the, the vital on the left side, I probably would have hit the minions twice, and then I would have exited back to the right here to get out of range. He probably comes up. He'll waste his passive, right? Aatrox passive does a lot of damage, and it has a lot of healing, so you want him to use it on a minion. So I'd go back, reset this vital, and allow him to waste his passive. This viewer decides not to do that and goes for just a body lunge. And as you can see right here on this damage bar, you can see how uh, Fiora did not win this trade. These three range minions are probably gonna turn around here and start hitting her. This is not a worthy trade for him. He lost a lot of HP. So this is, I guess, is an example of not to, well, of what not to do. Don't just dive the back line without getting your proc on the vital and take damage from these ranged minions. So he has to waste his Q to go back which means he's probably not going to get this vital here, but he is threatening just to do an auto attack if and trade uh, that vital. If Aatrox wants to come up and get one of these other minions here, he's actually going to give it to him. Wow. Able to see yes. You know he has the passive up. Oh, man. I mean, I guess I understand if he, if he wants to keep playing really, really aggressive here, but he should have waited for Aatrox to once again waste his passive on this low minion and then go to the side and proc that vital. He got lucky with the next vital, gets the speed boost, and is able to walk out with basically an even HP advantage. I don't know if I love this play, but um, I guess he's getting him low. Again, they both have Ignite, so these trades mean a lot more because one of them could look for an all-in, and if the other one is not expecting it, uh, that will be bad. So he's level 2. Um, he's just last hitting the minions. He He's built up somewhat of a fast push here. I don't know if he can... Um, not push this wave until this third wave gets there. We'll see what happens. But the goal is to only last hit here. You're trying to make as uh, take as much time as possible. You want to wait till your wave comes and meets that third wave, and then you can fast push the wave and crash it into the tower to get that cheater recall. But we'll see what happens. He's last hitting. He's missed two minions. Okay, 
he should probably be focusing on just getting these minions here so that he can buy a long sword or boots and a refillable when he does a cheetah recall. My guess is he's being so aggro here because he's looking for a level three dive. Um, but we, we can see what he ends up doing. He's, he's going to hit level two. He still has flash up. So I don't know. And he's basically crashing his wave way too fast. So if he were to crash the third wave and he wanted to dive with Ignite, then he could. But he's doing it a little bit too fast. He's playing a little impatient. And so he's not able to um, play the lane exactly the way he wants to. So he should be autoing all these minions, maybe even using abilities on it. He should be all the way up here, pushing, 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 pushing this wave under tower. Forget the Aatrox. You have the minion advantage. He cannot try to kill you here. He's also level two. He's just missing so much. There's no reason why he should be missing these minions. And now he should instantly recall one of these bushes or literally right here. Okay, another wasted opportunity. He could go back and buy from that uh, first blood that he had and from his, I don't know how many minions does he have. He missed a lot of CS here. He has 12 CS. He probably barely has three to 350 gold at this point. So I he'd probably only be able to buy a long sword or just boots and refillable or something. But even that, plus the first blood gold, like you would have, he could maybe even get a pickaxe, plus his, plus his ignite. He's going to be super far ahead in this lane. And then he's wasting time under this tower when he really doesn't need to. Is he going to... Okay. And now here, Aatrox has the advantage. Udyr is pathing top. The wave is pushing back towards Fiora. Um... What Fiora is very good at in duels is chasing her opponents through, throughout up the lane with her speed boost on the vitals and her ultimate and killing them. But when Aatrox is basically under his tower, he's got the wave here. He can farm, kind of poke out Fiora, and then call for Udyr to come help him. And this is why Fiora wants to do a cheater recall so she can uh, get back to lane stronger and also let time pass where Aatrox is pushing the lane here. So let's see what he's doing. He's going for... He's just trying to go for a kill when I don't think that's necessary. Because he's on the same footing with Aatrox when he could basically have either two long swords or a pickaxe. And now he's recalling about 30 seconds later than he should. And I'm actually very curious how... Okay, he's going to have to stay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But again, now this is dangerous, right? Because the wave is pushing back to Fiora... He ha now has a level four advantage and Fiora's level three with basically 320 HP. He has double the HP, more base stats. And so is he waiting for a gank? I mean, this is not a good gank from Nunu to even try. If you're Nunu, you call it off and you go farm your top side here. Because Aatrox has Ignite too. Tries to land the stun. Doesn't hang around for some reason. I guess is able to get the kill. So he got bailed out by his jungler even though Udyr should have been closer to run up immediately and help counter gank. Or as he finishes his blue side, go for uh, the lane or the alcove in order to help out a little bit. Uh, but they get lucky, so whatever. Oh, he's able to get the Iron Spike Whip. Okay, so he's very strong now. Uh, he does not have Ignite. He's at level four. He will get here uh, just as these minions are crashing. He'll just farm them. Very, very good. Again, Aatrox staying way too late, way too long. He should be leaving ASAP. With this item advantage he has. Wow, for some reason able to duel here him there. Okay. I guess he lost his HP advantage again. Aatrox used his ignite there. Uh Fior still has the advantage with his iron spike whip. Let's see what Aatrox has. Aatrox only has a longsword. Fiora desperately has the lead here. Once he's uh, his W is up, which I guess it's up in 17 seconds. So if he gets caught, that's no good. So he's playing back. He's waiting for his repose to come back up. Aatrox is probably going to hard shove the lane. Look to poke him under tower. So Fiora wants to stay alive. Try to get level 6 and then all in with his Iron Spike Whip. He will do a lot of damage. Okay. That was a good hit by Aatrox. He should be able to easily get these. Waste his repost again. He got a little nervous. He wards, I guess. I don't know where he's going. Yeah, maybe he was looking for Scuttle. Because he's losing lane advantage and Aatrox is just going to cut him off here from the, the wave. So he's basically roaming with no purpose in mind. <laughs> They've seen him on the ward and Aatrox and now he's calling for the dive. My guess is this 
doesn't end well for the dive, but we'll see. She's level six now. Yep, yep, yep. Moodier's gonna call it off. Okay. And now he goes for the all in. Well played. So kind of a weird roam, uh, but because of the two kills, he just had an XP advantage when even though he wasn't playing the lane, uh, he had. And so let's see. He should be watching his mini map right now. You know, Atri he knows Atriox is up. Takes 30 seconds to get back to lane. He should probably go for one plate here. And he does. If he got this kill any sooner, I would say pre-6, uh, there's no point in going for that um, that that tower plate because Aatrox would have spawned much sooner. He would have been back in lane right now, and you really threaten um, just dying. <laughs> so, um, But that's good. He he understands the time of the game that he's in, and he gets that plate, that little bit extra gold. Queuing back to lane, this is good. So even though he misses those, those three melees, he's able to get the XP from them, which is really what matters. Aatrox has to shove the lane and back in order to get a uh, serrated Dirk. And now uh, Fiora, uh, yeah, I guess that's a good point. After killing this minion under tower, he should just slow push. He should just last hit. There's no point to be fast pushing here. He's basically pushing the wave under for Aatrox. If he slow pushes here, he's able to get a larger advantage and really look for an all in on Aatrox. But right now the lane is going to crash so hard with those ten, nine minions that Aatrox can just chill out and then he's going to get all this golden XP. I mean, I don't know even know why he's sit up here. He's just going to uh, misses the repost. That would have been a kill with ignite and ult probably conquer stacks. Yeah, so a big missed opportunity there. He probably could have gotten his third kill. Going for the plants. So let's look, uh, watch a little bit more to see how he closes this out. So let's go ahead and just stop it there. There's not much more to watch here. Um, but I hope from this early game, you can kind of see how you should be thinking through the lane as Fiora. Um, just in recognizing how to take certain advantages and also what stupid moves not to take when you're just not going to win these fights. Focusing more on the minion wave, focusing less on just diving in and lunging at your opponent. And then when you really want to go in for the kills, uh, playing the wave well will allow you to do that. All right, guys, now let's take a look at Fiora and how to play her in the mid game. Uh, I have chosen a different game here just because um, in the last one for the early game, Fiora was dominating. I don't even think she died that game. And so obviously went on to be very strong and win. But what about in this game? When Fiora is down a tower, she's two and two against a set that is three and two. Clearly, set is much farther along, much farther ahead than Fiora, and she only got one plate total. Who knows if she even got the gold from it. If we look at the rest of her team, they're doing relatively well, like the mid jungle and ADC are carrying. So how does Fiora get back into the game and end up contributing to help win? So uh, the wave is pushed at her tier two tower. Now let's just kind of take a look at how he decides to play this. So he's pushing out, doesn't know where Set is on the map right now. Continuing to push, see Set in the mid lane, views this as an opportunity to get a lot of damage onto the tower. Remember, he doesn't even have his first item yet, so he's desperately trying to get that. Okay, now when wondering, when you're so far extended, how much of the turret you can hit. We need to realize that we can see set on this ward. We see Caitlyn down here. We don't know where Viego is, but I'm pretty sure they saw him on this ward a second ago. And you assume that Senna's also in the bot lane. So all you're worried about is a level 10 Lissandra that could be coming. Now she should keep an eye on this ward here. She does see Twitch fighting him. This is probably a situation where I would back out. We'll see what he decides to do. He decides to stay. Probably because he has three teammates down here. They're fighting. Fiora sees that they're winning. Does he keep going? Now a lot of team, a lot of a lot of players would just AFK and then go into this bush. Maybe not even clear the wave. They're just not even looking at the map. But they're about to see Viego. They're about to see Caitlyn, and they've seen Senna down here as well. And Lissandra is about to show up in the mid lane. So you should clear this wave. Take a look at the map and see if anybody's going to be able to stop you if you go for another tower. So starts the recall, realizes that nobody's up here, keeps going. Sets up in 20 seconds, Viego's up in 30. Lissandra finally comes in matches. 
Fiora realizes that she can't do much to her. We'll probably end up pushing this wave. Has the support from Kindred. And now is going to recall. So if he would have just blindly recalled after shoving the wave into tower, or maybe even after taking the first tower, he would have had much less gold. But now he's going to be able to get uh, this full item spike that he desperately needs. And I think he might even have enough gold to finish his boots as well. We'll see. Oh, it goes straight in for the Tiamat. Okay. I respect that. Gore Drinker in a Tiamat. And now running back. Now, before we figure out where he's going as he's kind of pathing towards the mid lane, let's take a look at the map and figure out what is going on. So we see that Dragon is live right now. They only have one Dragon so far. So is Rift Herald, but Kindred is about to do it. Set is shoving the lane. It will inevitably kind of crash on this side of the map. And Jin is kind of able to farm relatively safely around here at Dragon. Uh, Fiora has Ignite, not Teleport. So if they want to take Rift Herald and then go as five to Dragon here, that'd be great. Otherwise, Fiora should just go into a side lane and farm. Since Jin is already bot lane, she should go back to the top lane. That's what they decided to do. I think they think they're trading Dragon for Rift Herald here. That's probably what they think they're doing. They're hard pinging it. Jin is very overextended for that kind of a call, though. Maybe he knows they're there as their award. There is not. Okay. So they trade it. That's fine. Fiora's back in the top lane. And now because... I just want you guys to watch this. While Set was randomly roaming when he was 3 and 2, he was he roamed to the mid lane. He died. Fiora got like 5 or 6 waves of minions, got a tower, finished an item, and then got her team at. Now she's able to, to, to fight Set, plus all the XP that she got. Uh, she caught up on. Now they're even in levels and about even in gold as well, and she can fight him. We'll watch this here. Gets the ult off. He's obviously super tanky. Ult bug. Nice. I mean, he's just going to whittle him down now. Set doesn't have the damage. He needs a Bramble Vest to fight. So finally gets the kill because of how... Fiora played the lane when she was behind and Set decided to throw his lead and just randomly go roam to the mid lane when Fiora's teammates are strong, allowing her to get stronger and actually just catch up. So she's going to push here. Now, half HP. Uh, the other team has two people dead. Viego is very low in the mid lane. She knows people have just recalled her spawn. She's probably just going to shove this lane and then recall. She doesn't really have the mana or the HP to stay and clear the tower. She didn't get a couple of hits in. Okay, that's fine. Hughes away. Very well played. Very well played. Gonna recall. Use Ignite in that fight. Another reason why you might want to consider taking Ignite. Okay. The reason why she ran mid here. I mean, obviously there's a fight, but let's just look at the map before understanding. Maybe more in depth why okay this lane is shoved it will take probably a whole minute minute and a half for it to be on this side of the lane no point in overextending immediately after recalling same thing over here this lane is under tower the next wave is about to crash under tower and fiora sees that her team is being collapsed on she runs mid i'm wondering if there's going to be anything for her here but we'll take a look at this fight anyways oh wow, actually gets that kill able to queue out. My guess is he can turn on Viego here. Double kill. Very nice. Now remember, the reason why they were able to do that, now they are strong, right? They have a lot more gold than the other team, but they shoved the side lanes out to a point where uh, they are willing to fight this because the lanes are going to either, or the waves are going to die under tower here on either side and then shove back to their side of the lane, stacking minions and killing their own, right? Reducing the amount of gold and XP that the other team can get. And because they choose to, to kind of ignore those waves and try to get picks in the mid lane, um, all of Fiora's team is able to come, collapse, they're stronger, they win, and the other team is losing waves, gold and XP in the side lanes. Just a very, very good play. We'll just fast forward a little bit longer. Early. They get this inhibitor here. And that's pretty much the end of the mid game. Now, they were able to do this really fast because some of Fiora's teammates were in the lead, set through the lead that he had in the top lane just super quickly. Right? I think this is a Diamond 2 game. Just quickly through the, the lead. 
Now this would usually take, you know, 20 to 25 minutes, but now that the inhibitor is down, this inner uh, base tower is down, uh, that's the end of the mid game. Now we're into the late game, even though there's only two dragons that have been taken so far. All right, guys, now let's talk about how to play the late game as Fiora. As you can see in this game, her team is up 18 to 9, uh, but they're only up around 2,000 gold, and her she has her uh, top laner's tower, and her opponent does not have her first tier tower. Now, it might be easy to say, oh, they're so far ahead, like clearly they're going to win here. I mean, yeah, like her mid laner, her ADC are very far ahead, but we just want to look at the macro plays that Fiora makes to secure the win. You can easily throw a game here in silver, gold, if you're not playing the macro well. So we're just going to watch this for a little bit, kind of see what Fiora does, see if we have any critiques of it. Uh, as we can see, they do not have their tower in the bot lane. Uh, the opposing tower is pretty healthy, um, but Vayne is making um, a push right here in the mid lane probably just killed Ezreal uh, to take this tower. Let's just take a look more closely at the Fiora. Shago goes up and helps. If you're gonna get this tower. Um, Stridebreaker and Tiamat. Probably good into, into ranged champions. I respect it. Okay, she pushes the wave in. She's gonna kind of look at maybe going for the tower. Um, but is also going to go see what how Vayne is doing right here in Shaco. That's fine. Okay, he should probably just get out of here and recall. If he overextends, they lose um, 650 gold worth of bounties. No reason to fight here um, unless they're able to get some sort of pick. Wow, this is just absolute mayhem. Okay, I do want to point out quickly, that was not a great fight from her team. Uh, if they die, the other team can get Baron. They also don't have their most fed player over here in Rumble, who's just split pushing. Not sure why he's not with the team. Um, Rumble doesn't really take towers quickly, but he's continuing to push his lead, get XP, get gold. I understand that. It's a good engage by by Red here to try to get a couple of kills, right? Their most fed player is not there. Uh, they should probably should have waited for Kaisa. I guess that's okay. They're going to try to keep going. I, do, I guess they do get barred. They get one. And they choose to engage. Wow, Vayne barely lives, right? So, Fiora dies. Yep. So, when you're able to shove it in, your most fed player is not there. Just push the lane out and recall, right? Not more, not much more you need to do. Let's just skip ahead a little bit farther and see what happens, right? So, that is going to delay the game a little bit. As you can see, the, the game goes to like 32 minutes. If you're up by 12 kills, you should be looking to end the game at 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, so this game is already taking longer than it should. We'll fast forward, take a look at where he should go. Uh, so he has Ignite and not Teleport. We see that uh, the next dragon is up. Let me turn these objective timers on quick. Next dragon is up in 18 seconds. He's going to path there. There's a huge wave going towards... Uh, the top lane, that is very tempting, but he should probably go to Dragon with his team just to secure it. The other team, it's only second Dragon. They should give this. They should allow Quinn to crash this massive wave in the top lane. They should push out uh, mid and maybe look for a pick, maybe clear some vision. They should not be fighting this. Um, now that they're seeing the red team clear out and pinging Baron. I'm actually more disappointed that Fiora is not in the top lane to get this massive wave. It's big enough where I would probably recall to go grab it after clearing this one down here. He's going to keep up the pressure. That's fine. Kind of hanging around Dragon. We're getting it. What the heck? Talia is just trolling. Okay. Able to get the pick, rotate over to Baron. Quinn does not push the wave all the way in, so it's going to probably freeze right about there. Wow, and they are collapsing pretty well on red team here. Fiora should go all the way around. That's fine. We'll just take the one, and then they should take Bar Baron here immediately. Man, I mean, Quinn just pushes one more wave. They all recall, maybe get a ward down on Baron. They don't lose it. So Red had a really good play there and then kind of threw the advantage that they had. Hanging around to way too long still. Man, that new plant is crazy. Uh, yeah, I guess Shaco's dead. Talia's not, not able to get Baron. Okay, continuing to farm up as much as possible. 
Level 14, um, tied with her own Rumble, highest level in the game. He can't really, if he had teleport, I would tell him to go bot right now, right? Put a lot of pressure down there. Nobody on their team has teleport either. But because this team has been very skirmishy, because Baron is still up, I understand his want to continue to stay top lane. Okay, I think that he, I guess that this is probably fine. Let Vayne and Bard go top, if that's what they choose to do here. Bard can control vision around uh, Baron, instead of it just being the Fiora. Totally understand that. Quinn is now level 14. Looking for a little poke. So yeah, this is this is just boring macro Fiora plays, right? Just continuing to push. Our Krugs up, take Krugs. Team's fighting, rotate over. Okay, again, for some reason, Red Team is, is choosing to fight in, in areas that they do not need to be. They should be shoving this out to, to, to deny them getting Baron. But instead, they are just continuing to push out. All right, they get Baron. We'll look at what they do with Baron here quickly. Oh, they're not even going to go for it. Ah, Talia's up. Dang, they've had two opportunities here. If Shaco stays alive, that they get Baron. Okay, Quinn is trying to go for a fight here. Fjord should just run away. Yep. Great up. Great choice. Her team is not up. Can Bard make it to the he can? Able to get that. Flashes out. Dang, very nicely played. So basically, your goal as Fiora in, in the top lane went after like 15 to uh, maybe like 20 minutes, 18 to 20 minutes, is to apply as much pressure in the side lane as possible, steal jungle camps, and rotate and flank into fights as needed. And also, be if you're not taking teleport, make sure you're there with your team. Uh, it's probably, even if you do have teleport, it's better to be with your team at these objectives anyways, like Dragon, Baron. Make sure you're there with them. Walk there, and if you have to use your teleport to go back or something for a split push, then by all means do that. Uh, but, the, but this is all about vision, mobility, Pushing lanes, you have, I mean, she would she doesn't have Gore Drinker, but if she had Gore Drinker plus Tiamat with her Hydra, she would just easily just keep shoving lanes, easily clearing these waves very, very quickly, and would just continue to outfarm, and nobody would be able to, to duel her. He's level, she's level 15, no one else is even close. Right, and so he just continued to do that. Romp up, taking it. Let's see what he has for items now. Yep, he's looking to build his third item. Sees that the team is fighting. Decides to go over. Not really sure what's going on here. Okay, team's got a handle. Pushing mid, right? Not wasting any time. Now we can go Baron. Shaco's up. Fiora's up. Vayne's up. And Talia, enemy jungler, is dead. They take it very quickly. Fiora should recall and then go mid immediately. Yep, wasted a little bit of time. That's okay. Got Dragon up in 17. He should be... I guess at this point, they're just more concerned about winning fights. I guess right before a large objective like Dragon. That's probably understandable. All right, if he was able to recall a little bit earlier, maybe able to push out bot lane to get a little bit more pressure. Not able to do that. Vayne and Rumble are just so strong at this point, it doesn't even matter. So... Macro could use a tad bit of work, but for the most part, clean enough, right? I think the biggest thing, they opened a window back here at what, 18 minutes during this fight when they were all up here, right? No need to fight after you shove in these waves, get towers. No need. I think it was right here. Even farther ahead? Oh yeah, it was here. No need to fight. Your most fed players bot lane. This is when uh, this team... They're 4k gold down now. They're able to get some shutdowns, 300 gold, get back a little bit closer to even. I mean, Rumble's 5, 1, and 2 with almost two items. Like, you want to you wanna just fight with him. So, fighting in the enemy jungle after you've already shoved this lane, you're getting collapsed on. Probably not the best move, uh, but they're able... I mean, Red Team just throws the next play after this. So, remember, you want to keep pressure on the side lanes. You want to farm as much as possible. Go to different lanes than your AD carry. When, uh, if Dragon is coming up and needing to be pressured, see if your bot lane can be up there, and then you can kind of push out bot and then go hover around Baron. Or, if Dragon's up, make sure you're there with your team first. Maybe shove out bot lane if you have a chance. Make sure you have wards, though, so you don't get caught and lose Dragon. 
so that you can end up joining your team. And then you can go match a split pusher if you need to. It's all about pressure, farm, staying as strong as possible. If you have a lead, staying as strong as possible. And if you're behind, like Fiora was in the last game, right, for the mid lane or, or mid game, you want to get as uh, strong as possible, right? Catch up in XP, catch up in gold, get your core items, get that experience so that you can end up matching bruisery champions like that set. Um, but if you follow these principles and keep doing your own VOD reviews, watching high ELO players, watching Korean pros, or even whatever pros you want to watch, watch how they play every single lane, every single part of the game. Make sure you are looking at every little decision that they make and ask yourself, why are they making that decision? And if you don't know the answer, just mimic them until you can understand the answer so you can make your own more informed decisions in the future. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this long guide. I hope you really enjoyed it. My socials are down below. If you want to follow me on Twitter, go ahead and check out the tickets of diamond blueprint. Use code for to get $50 off. If you want to get to the rank that you deserve and you can join our private discord with a community that is on the same journey as you, you're not going to regret it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Snowda and I'll see you in the next video.